Sadashiva appeared on this earth about 7000 years ago at that time man was divided into small clans conflicts and feuds among different clans were frequent incidents man was not yet able to build a beautiful human society seeing this lord sadashiva told them Atma Gotram Parityajya Shiva Gotram Pravishati O children of immortality give up your individual petty thoughts stop quarreling among yourselves take shelter in me i shall show you the path of peace of liberation basically He wished to create a thread of unity among Mongolians, Dravidians, Aryans and non-Aryans. Simultaneously, he introduced a merit system. Science of medicine. Music. about an awakening to human civilization Similarly Lord Krishna came to save humanity about 3500 years ago He created dharma based mahabharata Three thousand five hundred years had passed since then From 1914 to 1918 millions of people fell victim to the first world war Even before the smell of the gunpowder faded away second world war began 
in 1939. In the year 1945, America dropped lethal atom bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki of Japan. As a result, millions of people lost their lives. Countless people became maimed. Hiroshima and Nagasaki were reduced to deserts. Because of the rise of communism in Russia and its consequent exploitation, Humanity was converted into animality. To quell mass uprising, heads of states like Hitler killed thousands of people regardless of any consideration. Famine in the ghettos. Death camps. The period from 1914 to 1945 was a dark age in world history. As a result of war that continued for 32 years, famine, despair, theft, snatching, etc. came to the fore. It was impossible for a human being to save humanity, that is, human society, from such dangerous situation. So, Lord Sri Sri Anandamurti Ji took birth as a Mahasambhuti, that is, Tarak Brahma, for the third time. Illuminating the lap of Srimati Abharani, in the year 1921 appeared a divine baby at 6.07 a.m. on Boishakhi Purnima Day in the house of Lakshmi Narayan Shorkar in Jamal. Later, this divine baby, spiritual guru Sri Sri Anandamurti Ji, came to be venerated and worshipped by people of the whole world. From the very hour of birth, he started showing miracles. According to the custom of the family, as soon as the maternal grandmother Indumati Devi took the wick near the lips of baby Prabhat, Little Prabhat raised his two little arms and tried to draw the milk bowl towards his mouth, as if he was telling all, I am an adult. Why are you giving me such a small quantity of milk? Seeing that supernatural sight, all who were present became speechless. A single question haunted their minds. This baby was not an ordinary one. He was surely some great man who had made his advent with tremendous power. At this sight, paternal grandmother named the baby Budo. That little Prabhat was not an ordinary human being, was revealed anew by his horoscope. Astrologers told Prabhat's father, Lakshminarayan Sarkar, this baby is divine. He is bound to achieve greatness when he grows up to be a man. In him are inherent all kinds of God-gifted rare powers. One day, the fame of this divine baby will spread throughout the entire globe. The baby shall pave the path to true liberation for the oppressed and helpless people. Mons will be his companion in his journey. Shakti Amar Bhuntu Ama Shile Tumi Kun Bideshe Shakti Amar Bhuntu Amar Shile Tumi Kun Bideshe Amar Shakol Hiyar Bad Bhenge Jai Tumai Dekhe Phalo Beshe Shakti Amar Bhuntu Amar Shile Tumi Kun Bideshe Later Everyone started calling the little old man Bubu. Taking into consideration all factors, his family members named him Prabhat Ramjan. 
The name Prabhat means one who is able to usher in a new dawn in both human life and social life. When Prabhat Ranjun was just a five years old boy, Mother Afarani witnessed feats of young Prabhat. Her son would suddenly wake up in the midnight and sit on the bed. On one occasion, she saw luminous radiance around her son. After a few days, Prabhat would often dream and would tell her mother, Mother, a type of reptile entered through my ear tonight. Sometimes he would say, Mother, gigantic animals, stars, planets, satellites were entering through my ears. Having heard such vivid description of strange animals, stars, planets, Abharani was astounded. She would think, Prabhat has never seen such types of things. Yet, how can he explain all these things so intricately, so beautifully? As days passed, strange incidents continued to happen to Prabhat's life. When Prabhat was just a four years old boy, a debate began between Mother Abharani Devi and Grandmother Veena Pani Devi. The topic was whether or not his elder sister Hira Prabha would be taught to sing. Hearing the debate, little Prabhat prompted to remind them. Quite a few years ago, you discussed the matter and already came to the conclusion that she will be taught to sing. Then why are you discussing the matter again? Hearing this, both the mother and the grandmother were surprised. Grandmother asked Prabhat, How could you know about this incident? We had this discussion five years ago. You were not even born at that time. A serene, gentle smile adorned his features as Prabhat replied, It is enough that I know about this. He left, leaving them in discreet silence. It was the day of Shiva Chaturdashi. Huge crowd assembled at the local temple of Shiva. Little Prabhat also went there with his mother. Suddenly, looking at the idol of Shiva, Prabhat started chanting fluently Dhyana Mantra of Shiva in Sanskrit. Dhainitam Mahishang Rajat Girinivam Charu Chandra Batangsam Ratna Kalpo Yalangam Parish Brigabara Viti Hastang Prashannam Hearing the chanting of a little boy, all became speechless. Absorbed in delight, even the priest of the temple asked little Prabhat, You are a little boy. How could you learn Dhyana Mantra of Shiva? I got this mantra through meditation. From his childhood days, Prabhat used to meditate. No one ever taught him this yoga practice. But he would practice it every moment. From the very beginning of his life, he gave special importance to spirituality. Anil Babu, his childhood friend and relative, saw through the window a strange thing. Prabhat was meditating and his body was floating in the air. Later, when he was asked about this, he denied it. From his childhood, different aspects of spiritual world manifested in him. Sometimes he was seen meditating along inside the forest of Kali Pahar. 
From his childhood, he was very courageous. On one occasion, his friend Sachindranath, along with other friends, were following him. They saw Prabhat Ranjan doing another strange, dangerous thing. Crossing Death Valley, he entered deep forest and was riding on the back of a tiger. Later, Utkatar too saw this horrific sin and cautioned his father Lakshmi Narayan. Once, a surprising incident happened. Four bulls rushed towards Monoranjun, Prabhat's childhood friend. Seeing this sight, Prabhat Ranjun raised his hand to stop the bulls. Like a miracle, the bulls stopped moving and looked like frozen objects. All eyewitnesses became bewildered and wide-eyed. According to the custom of Shorkar family, Babies were given non-vegetarian food only after they turned five years old. But Prabhat did not agree to eat that food. Binapani Devi, his grandmother, forcefully tried to push a piece of fish into his mouth. Prabhat vomited the entire food immediately. He got up. He left the chair and told everyone, including his grandmother, if you try to forcefully make me consume non-vegetarian food, I will never eat with you. Since then, no one tried to feed non-vegetarian food to Prabhat Ranjan. Prabhat Ranjan had an inborn quality. He appeared on this earth with Dhruva Smriti, fixed memory. Without these Dhruva Smriti, no person can establish oneself in omniscient wisdom. From his childhood, knowledge about mountains, rivers, geographical condition, history of the whole world was at the tip of his fingers. He used to talk about all these things to his classmates without least difficulty. Charmed, all kept hearing these descriptions. They were surprised to think how could he acquire so much knowledge. Even from his early childhood, he could beautifully recite Ravindanath's poems like Nirchare Shopnobhongo, Africa, Borshoshesh, Shah Jahan, Dushamai, and many others. Spellbound, all would hear and think, is it sharpness of memory? or Dhuva Smriti, or some other thing. From his very childhood, Prabhat could clearly speak languages like Bhojpuri, Ongika, Magahi, Maithili, Bengali, and many more. Once, during childhood, Himangshu Ranjan, his brother, saw an amazing thing. Prabhat, his elder brother, was writing something in incomprehensible language. Bewildered, Himangshuranjan asked, What are you writing? I am writing my name in Bengali, English, Hindi, Bhojpuri, Tamil, Telugu, Urdu, Malayalam, Gujarati, Kannad, Assamese, Naga in multiple languages. Packed came the reply. Amidst Himangshuranjan, asked his elder brother how could you learn so many languages with a strange smile Prabhat Ranjan replied I know all the languages of the world one incident can be mentioned in this context when Sheshan's judge of Patna High Court asked Prabhat Ranjan Sharkar better known as spiritual master Sri Sri Anandamurti Ji In which language do you want to give your statement? Sri Sri Anandamurti Ji replied I know more than 200 languages of the world Yet I shall make my statement in Cambridge English While giving a discourse on linguistics Sri Sri Anandamurti Ji said the same thing I know more than 200 languages of the world which has no dative case except in Sanskrit. In course of time, these valuable discourses were compiled into different books such as Borno Bigyan, Borno Bichitra, 
Lokhunirukta and many more containing more than 300 pages and all were published linguists of the world appreciated his vast knowledge on linguistics acknowledging his profound wisdom since childhood bhavani charan mitra the headmaster of the school would assign responsibility to prabhat ranjan for teaching lower classes in the absence of geography teacher all teachers loved him as much as he respected them till the last day of his life remembering their contribution he dedicated extraordinary research centric eight volumes of borno bichitra to his respected teachers he wrote remembering pandit antaryami jha and pandit pk ayer by whose grace i was trained in the rhythmic meter of intellectual language pandit hiralal jha by whose kindness i had the opportunity to ascend to the threshold of music maulabi abdullah hilbaki at whose feet i had the opportunity to learn arabic farsi and a little tamil and the late bijon kumar chattopadhyay sitting on whose lap at the age of 3 with a chalk in hand i learned the bengali characters humblest servant sri prabhat ranjun shorkar from his childhood one more thing would attract the attention of all prabhat ranjun opposed casteism religious bigotry different kinds of dogma that eat up society like insects when he was a child a few of his locust friends sat on his bed after his friends left mother abharani washed the bed sheet and pillow covers young prabhat was so shocked that he immediately shank quilt of his bed and pillows in water mother if i do not wash this bed and pillow even it will remain unclean mother abharani was forced to concede defeat against the argument of prabhat through such small incidents he would make all understand how great and noble a human being he was he loved everything of the created world from his very childhood he could understand the language of birds and animals once an incident happened at bamunpara he along with a few friends was sitting under a tree All of a sudden, Prabhat Ranjan said, "Look, what a beautiful bird is sitting on the tree! How melodiously it is singing! Actually, the bird is calling other birds through its melody." What happened next was true to his words. In no time, many birds flew in and sat on the tree. They started chirping among themselves. After some time, another bird gave a call. Prabhat Ranjan said, "It is time for them to leave. They will leave right now." In the twinkling of an eye, all birds flew away. Shorkar family had a very intimate relation with the Bhojpuri family. Since the birth of Prabhat Ranjan, members of Shorkar family used to visit that family very frequently. Radha, the only daughter of the house, used to love Prabhat Ranjan like her younger brother. When Prabhat Ranjan was 12 years old, suddenly Radha passed away. The sudden death of her daughter made her mother burst into tears. Prabhat Ranjan tried his best to console her but he failed forced by circumstances he told the lady I shall make you see your daughter but you will have to promise 
First, you will not touch her. Second, you will not request me to do the same thing again. Also, you will have to keep it a secret. The mother agreed with these conditions. Prabhat Ranjun kept his words. The mourning mother saw her daughter again. Though it lasted for five minutes only, the mother was overjoyed. Thus, in the charming ambience of Jamalpur, the childhood of Prabhat Ranjan was passing cheerfully. But what an irony of fate! Deep darkness engulfed Sarkar family. All of a sudden, affected by an acute black fever, Lakshmi Narayan, Prabhat's father, died on the night of 12th February 1936. He was then 44 years old only. Lakshmi Narayan Sarkar was the only earning member of the family. Naturally, as the eldest son of the house, all responsibilities of the family were assigned to Prabhat Ranjan. He was then only a student of class 8. He had four younger brothers and one sister. On 22nd November 1935, elder sister Hira Prabha got married at Chinsura in West Bengal. With a strong determination, Srimoti Avarani, who was very resolute, took the responsibility of the distraught family. With some financial help of the relatives of Lakshmi Narayan Sarkar, well-wishers, especially of uncle Sri Nirmal Chandra Sarkar, Srimoti Avarani saved the family from catastrophe temporarily. As days passed by, Prabhat Ranjun passed the matriculation examination with special achievement in the year 1939. As the eldest son, he decided to take responsibility of the family through a job. But as advised by Mother Abharani, Prabhat Ranjun was admitted in Bidashagur College, Kolkata, in the science department. It was decided that he would stay in the house of maternal uncle Sri Sharod Chandra Boshu, located at Dhanoda Ghosh Street. Prabhat Ranjun loved to remain alone for some time. So while studying in college, he would very much like to walk from Kashimitra Ghat to Howrah Bridge every evening along the bank of the Ganga. At that time, there were many bushes, thickets and crematory near Kashimitra Ghat. After sundown, people would not usually frequent those areas. As evening set in, those areas would become the territory of dacoits and snatchers to Prabhat Ranjur. That area became one of his most beloved places. It was Sravani Purnima, full moon in the month of Sravan. Fearless after sundown, Prabhat Ranjun was sitting at Kashimitra Ghat, facing towards Gonga. Without any worry, to his heart's content, he was observing the hide and seek game between the moon and the clouds. Making its characteristic sound, the river Gonga was flowing. It was a moment when Prabhat Ranjun was absorbed in indescribable bliss. Kali Chorun, the infamous dacoit of that area, was approaching him with a dagger. His intention was to loot everything that he had. Kali Chorun came closer and finally, the dacoit was forced to surrender himself before the strong personality and divine power of Prabhat Ranjun. Commanded by Prabhat Ranjun like a mesmerized person, he threw his weapon into the Ganga. After taking a bath in the Ganga, he genuflected before Prabhat Ranjun. He burst into tears. Disgrace of repentance purified the heart of Kali Chorun, the dacoit. Prabhat Ranjun was as if waiting for this moment on that evening. He initiated Kali Charun into tantric spiritual practice. Later, he named him Kali Kanandu Abadhuta. Srabuni Purnima Day, 1939, is a golden day in the history of Anandamark. 
on that day spiritual guru sri sri anand murti ji gave initiation for the first time shravani purni mar katha aaj mone pore aaj ke mone pore bandhu aaj ke mone pore aaj mone pore in 1939 When Prabhat Ranjan was going towards Kolkata, dark clouds of world war were spreading across the sky of Europe. In India, freedom struggle was going on. Kolkata was its center. Led by Gandhi ji, non-violence movement was on its full swing. Led by Subhash Chandra, the waves of all-out mass movement touched the core of hearts of the students and youth. Prabhat Ranjan was not lagging behind his friends. He was emotional but not indisciplined like other students. He followed the path of logic. His logical opinion inspired not only his classmates it also forced famous intellectuals to think about prabhat ranjan do prabhat ranjan was then only 17 years old bright young man many intellectuals hesitated to talk to him in that fiery situation of india well thought and logical thoughts of prabhat ranjan regarding the activities of the contemporary leaders won the minds of manobendra rai founder of radical humanism shubhash chandra bose and members of epoch making revolutionary community like torun chandra goho movie actor robin mojumdar footballer anil kumar prabhat ranjan had discussion on different subjects in detail with subhash chandra bose and manobendra rai guru prabhat ranjan once told his devotee sri himendra nayak of shimbhum district During summer vacation of 1940 I visited the house in Jamalpur at that time on a full moon evening Manobendra Rai and Shubhash Chandra Bose came to meet me in Tiger's Grave area our subject of discussion was independence of india during that discussion shubhash chandra said political freedom shall have to be achieved at all costs but manobendra rai wanted economic freedom according to his opinion political freedom will come along the way of economic freedom one day in the discussion on that day prabhat ranjan supported the idea of economic freedom broached by manobendra roy it can be understood if one reads the book to the patriots written by prabhat ranjan individually prabhat ranjan loved shubhas chandra very much later he dedicated the book problems of the day written by him to shubhas chandra to the great hero shubhas chandra bose whom i did love and whom i do love even now sri prabhat ranjo shortcut one thing is also known when shubhas chandra was escaping from the country Prabhat Ranjan made Subhash at Como station with Baba sitting on Tiger's grave Subhash Chandra and Manobendra realized one thing without spirituality creation of moralist leadership is not possible so on that day they accepted Prabhat Ranjan as their guru and took initiation from him once Prabhat Ranjan said do you know Subhash was a spiritual aspirant of a very high order. He did not ask for anything for him. He only wanted independence of India. When he was a prisoner in jail, Subhash Chandra engaged himself in deep meditation. This practice of meditation helped him to establish himself into a moralist, a strong person. While he was studying in college, Prabhat Ranjan would write essays, poems, short stories in different dailies and magazines. 
using a pseudonym. His razor sharp anthological essays used to be published in The Then Statesman, Searchlight, and others. In the course of time, his writings found a place in books such as Obhimoth and Proud Philosophy. From Dhaka city of undivided Bengal, Golden Lotus of the Blue Seas, and In the Fathomless Bottom of the Blue Sea were published in Urdu Delhi, Ittefaq, in the pseudonym of Taruddin. When the time for gaining freedom for India was imminent, Prabhat Ranjun would write letters to Indian politicians. He apprised them of some of his logical opinions. One of them is Shama Prashad Mukherjee. Aware of well-considered opinion of Prabhat Ranjun, Shama Prashad informed Indian politicians about the borders of Punjab, Bengal, Tripura with Pakistan and East Pakistan. When he raised this issue in Parliament, Nehru and Ballabhai Patel asked him, How could you know so many things? Shama Prasad replied, I came to know all this from a noble individual, Prabhat Ranjun Sharkar. He is an employee of Jamalpur Railway Workshop. Shama Prasad incidentally resigned from Nehru's cabinet to protest unreasonable decision regarding Kashmir and East Pakistan in 1950. After India became independent, Government of India decided to keep Sri Prabhat Ranjan under constant surveillance. Prabhat Ranjan's ancestral house was at Bamunbara in Bardhaman district. Once a year, he would go out of Jamalpur for Bamunbara on a pleasure trip. Prabhat Ranjan had special attraction for Bamunpara. Getting the news of Prabhat Ranjan's arrival, friends and relatives would want to have company with him. Once his friend Gopi Babu told a very popular story about Bama Khepa to Prabhat Ranjan. Once, a ticket collector forced great yogi Bama Khepa to get off the train because he had no ticket. As a result, even after trying hard, the guard and the driver could not make the train move. The passengers made the driver and the guard and the ticket collector understand the cause of this incident. They told the driver that one great yogi has been forced to get off the train. That is why the train was not moving. Requested by the guard, driver and also the ticket collector of the train, Bama Khapa boarded on the train again. The train started moving immediately. Having heard the story, Prabhat Ranjan said, Some spiritual power is necessary to make the train stop. That doesn't mean one has to become a Mahayogi. Hearing this, Gopi Babu asked Prabhat Ranjan, Can you make a train stop in this way? Prabhat Ranjan did not give a direct reply. He asked Gopi Babu, I heard you are going to Kolkata tomorrow. I will accompany you. In the morning, Gopi Babu went to Prabhat Ranjan's house and found he was not ready. It was almost time for the train to arrive. As Gopi Babu told Prabhat Ranjan to hurry up, Prabhat Ranjan with a smile said, Don't worry, the train will wait for us. Hearing this, Gopi Babu went to Shaktigarh station, bought a ticket, and boarded the train. It was already time for the train to depart. Gopi Babu saw calm and composed Prabhat Ranjan was walking towards the station at normal speed. The guard and the driver was not able to make the train move. Gopi Babu noticed and was quite astonished. Prabhat Ranjan 
reached the station, bought a ticket and moved ahead towards the stranded train. As soon as he boarded the train, at the touch of his feet, the train started moving. Prabhat Ranjan quietly sat beside Gopi Babu. I told you, the train would not move till I board the train. After some time, the train arrived at Pandal station. Like many passengers, Gopi Babu was about to get off the train to have a cup of tea. Usually, the train stopped here for a longer time. Prabhat Ranjan cautioned Gopi Babu. Do not get off the train today. The train will not stop here for long enough. Gopi Babu paid no heed to Prabhat Babu's caution. The moment Gopi Babu took the earthen pot with tea in his hand, the train started moving. Throwing the earthen teacup, Gopi Babu desperately boarded the running train. Amazed, Gopi Babu asked Prabhat Ranjan, Why did the train stop here for such a short time? With a gentle smile, Prabhat Babu answered, Remember, the train stopped at Shaktigar for a longer time. It made up for the time lost. Gopi Babu's awareness returned. He clearly understood everything and said to himself, Just yesterday I told Prabhat Babu regarding the stopping of train and asked whether he will be able to do so. Prabhat Babu, without saying a word, made me understand how much divine power he has. After passing intermediate examination, Prabhat Ranjan returned to Jamalpur. In the middle of 1941, after the death of his father, the condition of the family gradually went from bad to worse. Forced by circumstances, he was appointed to the post of clerk in pre-audit section of Accounts Department of Jamalpur Railway Workshop. His understanding of values of time, deep respect for duty, overwhelmed everyone working in his office. Along with this, his love for others, affection, amity, service-mindedness, deep knowledge on all subjects, especially his spiritual knowledge and divine power influenced all from general employees to higher level officers. The ambience of the office changed dramatically. Everyone was eager to talk to Prabhat Ranjan. All craved for his companionship. If anyone was in trouble, felt sick or faced with any problem, they would go to Prabhat Babu. They knew he had a solution for all of them with a gentle smile. Abharani was a devotee of Lord Krishna. An idol of Krishna was set on an altar in a corner of her room. She would worship that idol every day. Prabhatranjun regularly arranged flowers for his mother's worship. An incident happened one day. As Abharani was about to garland the idol of Krishna, strangely she found there was no idol on the altar. Bubu, that is Prabhat, himself was sitting on the altar. Unable to believe the sight, she cleansed her eyes again and again. When she wanted to garland the idol again, she saw the same sight. Forced by this amazing incident, she went to Prabhat. She told her son, My son, tell me one thing. Why are there so many obstacles? In my worship today, whenever I want to girl and Krishna, I see your image. A gentle smile flashed on Prabhat Ranjan's face as he told his mother, Mother, you love me so much. Maybe that is why while worshipping you saw me instead of Krishna. On that day, she was happy for sure. But the vision of the universal form of Krishna, the Vishwarup as witnessed by Mother Yashoda, kept on floating on the canvas of her mental plate again and again. Once, Acharya Hara Govinda and Sushil Babu had a special experience. 
They were on their way with Sri Sri Anandamurti ji during his evening walk. From the railway quarters in Jamalpur, Sri Sri Anandamurti ji used to stay. They were going towards the golf course via the railway bridge. Suddenly, they saw a monk standing under a tree near the church. He was quite tall, fair complexioned. His head was entwined with matted hair. His body had a cover of yellow color. As soon as Sri Sri Anandamurti ji reached near the monk, he bowed his head down before him. He also instructed Acharya Haragopinda and Sushil Babu to maintain a little distance from the monk. Sri Sri Anandamurti ji spent a lot of time with that monk on the tiger's grave. While leaving, the monk did prostration before Sri Sri Anandamurti ji. Thereafter, Acharya Haragavinda and Shushil Babu asked Anandamurti ji, Baba, who was this monk? Baba replied, He is none other than Totapuri, the great Tantric and the Guru of Ramakrishna. With the practice of Hatha Yoga, he has been living for 250 years. His spiritual practice has been completed. He was given some social responsibilities which he has already accomplished. Today, he came to me to seek my permission to leave his worldly body. Tutapuri will never have rebirth. He will surely attain salvation. After a few days of this incident, Gopinath Kaviraj, the renowned Pandit of India, said in Varanasi, Tutapuri, the renowned spiritual aspirant of Haryana has left his mortal frame. He was more than 250 years old at the time of his death. The advent of Prabhataranjan on earth is not a sudden incident. He appeared on this earth with a specific purpose. So, necessity arose for self-revelation as a guru before the whole world. It dates back to November 7, 1954. It was a Sunday. Prabhatranjan called all his disciples to come to his quarter at 339E Rampur Colony. Around 20 disciples gathered at a specified time in the evening. Prabhat Ranjan introduced one person with another, one by one. At the beginning of the spiritual meeting, Prabhat Ranjan sat on a cot. All did Shashtanga Pranam, one by one. That was the day Prabhat Ranjan made his first public appearance as Guru. He gave spiritual discourse for the first time. The subject of discourse was goal of humans, necessity of spiritual practice, and different stages of samadhi. After ending his discourse, he gave practical demonstration of elevation of coil serpentine on his disciple Pranay Kumar. I am Yogeshwar Anandamurti. O coil serpentine, I am ordering you, leaving Muladhar Chakra, Tyrannian Plexus, move upwards to Lunar Plexus. The moment he uttered these words, everyone was surprised as they saw the body of Pranay Kumar started shaking. Pranay Kumar shouted, his body was trembling. When coiled serpentine reached Sidereal Plexus, Pranay Kumar fell on the floor. He kept shouting loudly. When coiled serpentine reached solar plexus, vibrations of his body stopped. His body became motionless. An effulgence radiated from his eyes and face. His entire face had a bum of absolute peace. When coiled serpentine reached lunar plexus, Pranay's face started 
radiating more and more effulgence. At that time, Guru said, Be in supreme bliss. This state of a spiritual aspirant is called Savikalpa Samadhi. At this stage, microcosmic mind permanently merges with the macrocosmic mind. If one does spiritual practice with intense devotion and concentrated mind, one day he or she will enjoy this supreme this is a supreme desideratum of human beings, of all living beings. After a while, commanded by Baba, coil serpentine came down to Terranian plexus. Pranay Kumar started crying like a child. Baba, Baba, let me be in the state of supreme bliss. Let me be in the state of supreme bliss, Baba. Let me be in supreme bliss. Thus, the number of devotees kept increasing. In spite of confining Ananda Marga, Within a small room, Ananda Murtiji asked his devotees to build a Dhyana Mandir. Every evening, after returning from office, he would move out of his quarters and walk to Jagriti along a particular route. During evening, sitting inside the Jagriti, he would give different spiritual discourses. All devotees would eagerly wait to hear those discourses. An incident happened one day. A small boy was glancing into Jamalpur Jagriti from outside the gate. He was dressed in dirty clothes. After some time, Sri Sri Ananda Murtiji was expected to give general darshan for devotees. One devotee drove the boy away. It seemed he was searching for someone. The devotee thought him to be a boy of the locality. But the boy was stubborn and refused to leave. He remained standing near the gate. After some time, Baba Sri Sri Ananda Murtiji made his appearance. All shouted in unison. Param Pita Baba Ki Jai! Param Pita Baba Ki Jai! All entered Dhyana Mandir. Baba came for general darshan. He was about to give his discourse as he also noticed a little boy was standing near the door of Dhyana Mandir. Baba affectionately called him to come near him. Feeling shy, he was not willing. One Margi brother took him to Baba. Everybody realized it was that boy who was waiting near the main gate for quite some time. He was the boy who was driven away from Jagriti. When everyone entered Dhyana Mandir, he came near the door of Dhyana Mandir from main gate. Baba affectionately took him on his lap. Addressing all, he said, this boy has come from countryside of Bhagalpur. For a long time, he has been willing to see me, but he was penniless. How can he come? Though he is a little boy, he worked as a daily wage earner for some days and earned some money. Today, he has come near me. Seeing your dresses, he started thinking Perhaps only rich people could come here. There is no place here for a poor boy like him. Feeling shy, he was standing near the door to have a glimpse of me. From his lap, Baba made the boy stand on the floor. He asked him, Have you brought anything for me? The boy kept silent for a few moments. The face of the boy became red with shyness. 
Baba brought out a ball of sweet meat from his pocket. Addressing all, he said, After getting off the train, while he was on his way towards Ashram, he was thinking what he should bring for me. He had no money. Then he bought this ball of sweet meat with only five pesos. He started thinking, Baba has so many rich devotees. Will he eat this small ball of my sweet meat? Baba took a small part of sweet meat and gave the rest to the boy. Devotees who were present realized, Baba is omniscient. Baba is the God of devotees. He can read the minds of all. He never discriminates between the rich and the poor. Ramchandra Paswan was an urgent devotee of Sri Sri Ananda Murthy ji. He was initiated into Ananda Marga system of spiritual practice. So he accepted Prabhat Ranjan as his guru. Once an incident happened. Paswanji reached Barauni station to travel to North Bihar for familial work. As he was late to reach the station, he had no train on that night. He was forced to spend the night at Barauni station. It was summer. Excessive heat made Paswanji very tired. He laid down on a bench. Feeling terribly sleepy, he thought, uh, If I sleep now, Thebes will steal my money, clothes, bags, everything. He remembered his Guru Sri Sri Ananda Murthy ji and said, Baba, be kind to me. Please ensure that my bag is not stolen. Bag is not stolen, Baba. With this thought, he went to deep sleep. As he awoke, he found all his belongings were stolen. He broke down and cried. Baba, Baba, you could not save my bag from the thief. <laughs> I was sleeping. Okay. Were you also sleeping, Baba? Now tell me how will I return to my home? How will I return to my home, Baba? Nonplussed, he kept blaming Baba. Suddenly, a stranger came and snubbed him. Hey, why are you unreasonably blaming your guru? You should have been more careful. This is not done. Now don't waste any more time. Go to the bus stand immediately. You will find your bag there. Finally, Ramchandra Paswan found his bag there and became immensely happy. After a few days, Baba was giving general darshan at Jamalpur. While giving discourse, Baba said, Nowadays, my disciples want to test me. In order to test me, they request even their guru to guard their banks so that they can sleep on the platform unworried. Saying these words, Baba looked at Ramachandra. With a gentle smile, he said, if I begin testing my disciples, none of you will be able to pass that test. Ramchandraji realized tears rolled down his cheeks. He said inwardly, Baba, you love me so much. You love me so much, Baba. You love me so much. It was 25th December 1954. Calling veteran spiritual aspirants, Baba said, Prepare a draft of the constitution in order to create a new organization. The goal of the organization will be to dispel darkness from physical, mental and spiritual spheres and to establish human beings in humanistic stance. The organization will take them to the pinnacle of spirituality. Accepting the command of Guru with reverence, Pranay Kumar Chattubadhyay, Sukumar Basu, Shishir Dattu, Nagina Prashad, Vishwanath Singh, Devnarayan, all devotees of Baba prepared the draft. That memorable day came in the history of the world. It was January 1st, 1955. 
It was Sunday. On the occasion of International New Year, devotees assembled. After singing of bhajan and collective meditation, Baba gave a discourse on gradual development of society. At the end of the discourse, he told the devotees, We are going to create a new organization on January the 9th. On that day, you must be present in the quarters of Rampur Colony. A canopy was arranged inside the quarters to hold Dharma Mahachakra. Baba sat on the pedestal on elevated veranda. He gave a discourse. The subject was Prakriti Tattu and Onkar Tattu. After the discourse in Dharma Chakra, Baba gave Varabhai Mudra to the devotees for the first time. Baba told his disciples, A new organization is taking birth today. I am naming it Ananda Marga Pracharaka Sangha. One day, Baba told his devotees, Good days are coming. You will see one thing. Many people will want to associate themselves with you. Naturally, it will not be possible for me to initiate them into spiritual practice. So I have decided to create Acharya from among a few of you. As my representative, you will teach spiritual practice. Acharya training began with the purpose of propagating Sangha's ideology. Also the other goal was to initiate many people into spiritual practice. Pranay Kumar Chattopadhyay became the first Acharya. Sitting on Tiger's grave, Baba started giving dictation for different types of books. Thus was published books like Chorja Chorjo, Do's and Don'ts, Part 1, 2 and 3. Anandamarg Prarambhik Darshan and many others. He gave a discourse on Yama and Niyama, codes of self-restraint, to help maintaining a healthy body and mind. He also gave the flag and Pratik, the symbol. He commanded his devotees to sit for collective meditation every Sunday. He named it Dharma Chakra. Spiritual congregation held in the presence of Guru was named Dharma Mahachakra, where Guru himself would give discourse. Anandamarg organization was not restricted to small town of Jamalpur. Like sparks of fire, it spread to different corners of India, Bihar, Assam, Tripura and many others. It became problematic for family acharyas to keep pace with fast-spreading organization. It became necessary to create whole-time workers. In 1962, he created first monk and initiated him to Abadhuta Diksha. The number of Anandamarg monks kept increasing at tremendous speed. But that too was not enough for propagation of the ideology of the organization. To have a glimpse of Guru, hundreds of devotees used to come to Jamalpur from various parts of India. Long queues were seen for personal contact with Guru. Anandamarg organization kept expanding. To make it more extensive, Baba started forming a few branch organizations. For instance, on January 25, 1958, Baba formed Renesa Universal at Trimohan, Bhagalpur. He was lifelong president of this branch organization. In 1963, he established registered headquarters of Anandamarg at Anandanagar in the Purulia district of West Bengal. In the same year, he formed Education Relief and Welfare Section. It is a service-oriented organization. He created first nun of Anandamarg as the head of Women Welfare Department. Her name is Abadhutika Anandabharati Acharya. In 1965, he formed Women Welfare Department. He started Anandamarg Degree College in 1966 
and Anandamarg Institute of Technology in 1968. In order to spread the organization outside India, he sent Atmananda Abadhuta to Kenya in 1966. On 8 October 1970, Baba gave Kirtana, Ashtakshari Siddha Mantra, Baba Nam Kevalam in Amjharia near Rachi. Baba understood remaining in service life, it was not possible to work for Anandamarg. So, on December 29, 1966, around afternoon, he went to his office for the last time. He offered his last namaskar to all. With an ambience burdened with speechless pain, Baba told Shiv Shankar Babu, It is true that I am leaving Jamalpur for a noble mission. Wherever I may be, I will never forget you for sure. My mind will remain in Jamalpur. Whenever you wish, you may come to me without any hesitation. As a mark of my memory, I am leaving a glass used by me. On December 31, leaving his own house, Baba came to Jamalpur Jagriti by motor car. Thinking that Baba was leaving them, devotees burst into tears. Giving solace to all, Baba said, I will be with you all the time. Wherever you will want me, you will get me there. Vrind Padamekam Nagachami Pashami Yad Yada Yada Brajabhavam Visvarami Vrindavanam Parijaj Padamekam Nagachami Baba made all take a solemn vow. Margi brothers and sisters promised in unison. From this moment, we are determined to establish Baba's ideology. Thereafter, the moment Baba entered the car to go to Anandanagar, devotees started crying. <laughs> Baba said with a gentle smile Jamalpur is the place where my divine game began I will certainly come But devotees were stubborn They kept on crying Baba 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 to make his noble mission a reality, Baba assumed the form of Parthasarathi, living the form of Krishna of Braja. He told the driver, Drive the car. Leaving Jamalpur, Baba's car kept moving towards Anandanagar. Devotees were still looking at Baba's car. All started running towards Baba's car. Long-standing relation with Baba and love for Baba made them desperate. Their tears and shouts entered Baba's heart. After going a little distance, Baba stopped the car. Alighting from the car, Baba did namaskar to his devotees for the last time. Rolling and rolling on the dust of the sacred land, Devotees did Shashtanga Pranam for Baba. On that day, he reached Anandanagar in the evening. His dream was to build a beautiful town, including 52 Mosas of Anandanagar. His purpose was to guarantee food, clothes, house, education, medical care for every human being. In order to transform his dream into reality, he established 37 primary schools, four junior high schools, two high schools, one for the boys and another for the girls. Besides, there are a degree college, 
engineering college beat college commanded by him different kinds of centers for providing medical treatment children's home were also established as days passed several branches and sub branches spread throughout india and in different countries abroad service activities of anand marg kept spreading at a very fast pace inspired by sri sri anand murti ji's ideology millions of people accepted the ideology of sangha in order to transform his socio economic theory that is proud into reality in new marble persons came forward it was felt if proud philosophy can be imposed properly every human being of the world would get guarantee of food clothes house education medical care an exploitation free human society will be built to stop the sky creeping speed and progress of anand marg central government arrested anand murti ji even in the absence of any guilt by the influence of few capitalists and some greedy political leaders who were enemies of the society even a conspiracy was hatched to kill him inside the jail an infamous killer was tempted and sent to kill sri sri anand murti ji in his cell but that conspiracy failed because he was not an ordinary person he has come to this earth in the form of tarak brahma in first attempt when that killer prisoner went to the cell where anand murti ji was confined he saw that sri sri anand murti ji was not inside the cell where is anand murti ji gone out of fright the prisoner returned pressured by the cbi officers he went again this time he saw sri sri anand murti ji sitting on his bed he was smiling a strange smile seeing that smile of baba he again went back but cbi officers were hell bent to kill sri sri anand murti ji they intimidated the killer very much the killer was forced to go to the cell of anand murti ji again after entering the cell he saw an effulgence it was chasing him he was overwhelmed he realized that anand murti ji was not an ordinary person being afraid he returned and told the cbi officers please 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 kill me kill me if you want i won't be able to kill him i won't be able to kill him after this failure they administered poison to sri sri anand murti ji on 12th february 1973 To protest against this incident he started long fast that continued from April 1st 1973 to August 2nd 1978 The time span is 5 years 4 months and 2 days Only when Patna High Court acquitted him of all the charges against him he broke his fasting with fruit juice offered by his elder sister Hira Prabha Tarak Brahma Sri Sri Anand Murti ji's presence transformed Bakipur Central Jail at Patna into Vrindavan the birthplace of Lord Krishna where he played numerous divine games As a first class prisoner he got a few special facilities one of these is a paniya a caretaker He was a prisoner who would fill the pitcher with water for Baba. He would also do chores for Baba. To cause him pain, jail authorities engaged one infamous killer as caretaker. But the touch of the lotus feet of Sri Sri Anand Murti ji transformed this paniya into Balmiki, as goes the story of the dacoit Ratnakar. One day during post noon the caretaker was massaging baba's legs baba asked him you have committed many sins he replied yes baba you are absolutely correct baba said you killed 22 persons you outraged the modesty of so many girls looted money of numerous people the picture of your scene 
is full. He replied, you, you have said the correct thing, Baba. I have committed countless sins in my life. Baba said, Well, with so many sins, do you know what will happen to you after your death? The caretaker replied, Yes, Baba. I know what will happen to me after my death. Baba said, if you die, you will have no place even in hell. Massaging his legs, the caretaker replied, No, no, no. I won't go to hell. I will definitely have a place in heaven after my death. Baba asked him, Even after committing so many sins, how can you ever be so sure that you will be in heaven? The caretaker replied, Baba, you have seen only my sins, but here I am lying at your lotus feet. <laughs> I am giving service to you, Baba. These have washed away all my sins, so I will definitely be in heaven for eternity. <laughs> Hearing the words of the caretaker, Baba smiled a smirky smile. Baba was a receptacle of divine grace. If one surrenders to him, he forgives him and grace him. After coming out of jail, Sri Sri Anandamurti ji increased the speed of the organization so much that Anandamar spread in around 182 countries of the world. He formulated a new education system. He explained the term education in a novel way. E stands for enlargement of mind. D for desmap. D discipline. E. Etiquette S. Smartness M. Morality E. English P. Pronunciation U stands for Universal Outlook C stands for Character Building A stands for Active Habits T stands for Trustworthiness I stands for Ideation of the Supreme O stands for Omniscience Cress. N stands for Nice Temperament. The speciality of Anandamarga schools is to develop the qualities inherent in children. He propounded science, medical science, spiritual scripture, philosophy, social scripture, economics, neo humanism, arts microvitam, biopsychology, literature and many others. He introduced novel and unique Koshiki dance on 6 September 1978 which can cure 22 diseases of women. He introduced art for service and blessedness instead of art for art's sake. He composed and set to music 5,018 valuable songs Prabhat Shongi rich in rhythm, ideation, language and melody. The songs were composed in as many as 8 languages. He also composed songs in foreign languages. His songs are being appreciated in different countries of the world. Anandamarg Universal Relief Team, a mart founded by him has been recognized by the United Nations organizations. Happy with service activities of Amart, governments of different countries of the world lent their helping hands. To sum it up, Sri Sri Anandamurti ji is the only guru who has shown the path to remove darkness from physical, mental and spiritual spheres. Along with this, he has given birds, animals, plants, even insects, right to live. Today, let us unitedly offer 
millions of salutations at the lotus feet of Sri Sri Ananda Mutiji. Bajana Pukhi, Amogokhani, Bajana Pukhi, Amogokhani.